Well, hello, hello and welcome back. Uh, this is Greg French. Today we're going to be talking about or looking at the vCenter server appliance. We're going to install this into our lab environment and using the vCenter v -Center server, we're able to manage the hosts and uh, do a lot of the more uh, fun things uh, with the vSphere. And uh, let's get started. Uh, I've changed the lab around a little bit. We've got nine labs, but I've moved uh, the installation of the vCenter server up to lab five from lab, lab seven. Uh, this is going to be uh, important uh, because I uh, can't manage the, the new embedded hosts uh, without the vCenter server. So uh, trying to create shared storage for the nested hosts or uh, cloning uh, the Windows VMs. Uh, can't do that without the vCenter server. So today we're going to be looking at the installation of the vCenter server. So let's get started. Uh, the vCenter server appliance is a host manager. It manages the ESXIs. It's a virtual appliance and it's based on the Linux operating system. And it's easy to deploy it as an OVF template. And we'll be showing you how to do that. Uh, first of all, we need to get to uh, use the uh, vSphere client and open up our host. Uh, host, again, was uh, 192.168.1.70. Uh, once we get logged in, <coughs> we're going to go up to the uh, file in the tab area and click on uh, Deploy OVF Template. Uh, this template uh, file is going to be an OVA file and we're going to open it up and uh, deploy it. Uh, second thing here it's going to show you, it's going to, you've got to find the uh, OVA file. Uh, it should be downloaded and put onto your computer or your laptop or whatever you're using to uh, manage this lab. Uh, once we find it, we can browse using the, the browse button here. Uh, again, we're going to be looking for an OVA file, and it's going to be the vCenter server appliance. This is the 5.1 that I downloaded. Uh, next is uh, some of the template details. Uh, it's going to download as a 1.7 gigabyte file. It's a pretty good size. Uh, thin provisions is only going to take 3.4, about 4 gigabytes. Uh, thick provision will need 125, so we'll use a uh, again, a thin provisioning, or this will actually uh, deploy as a thin provisioned appliance. Uh, some of the things about this, you're going to find out that it's going to deploy using 8 uh, gigabytes. Uh, we can reduce that after once it's deployed uh, to 4 gigabytes, and you can save yourself uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's going to need two uh, cores, and again, you could probably uh, reduce one of those cores, but you'll need two cores in order to get it deployed and eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, next, uh, next slide or next window here, it's, uh, you can change the name. This is the default name, VMware uh, vCenter Server Appliance. You could shorten that if you wanted to just uh, vCenter Server. Uh, I went ahead and shortened it to the vCenter Server Appliance. Uh, <coughs> going to use data store one here. Uh, available space is only 45 gigabytes, but again, if we if we use the thin provision, uh, we can reduce that to uh, less than uh, less than eight gigs. It's not going to come out as about four. So you can uh, I would use the thin provision, and as you deploy it, it'll it'll be a lot smaller. Uh, next here is we got the uh, some more information about uh, about this vCenter server. Uh, as we deploy it, I'm going to go ahead and open up a console, uh, and then I can uh, watch it as it's being uh, loaded. Uh, once it's finished uh, deploying, you'll get this screen. And if you have uh, DHCP running, it will go ahead and find that, and it'll assign itself an IP address. So the IP address that it assigned was 192.168.1.9. And I'm going to change uh, this to uh, 70, 71. And uh, we'll be showing you how to do that. But first of all, you need to get this uh, HTTPS colon slash slash 192. And put that into your browser. So pulling up uh, Chrome, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, HTTPS, put it in here into my browser URL. 
and we're going to be going to port uh, 5480 so colon 5480 and then go ahead and click on that to browse to it you'll get this uh, site security certificate is not trusted go ahead and click on proceed anyway you'll get to the uh, login go ahead and log in as root and the password for this the default password is um, VMware and go ahead and then log in it's uh, just lowercase uh, you'll get this uh, uh, user agreement go ahead and accept it and then hit next uh, we're going to configure with the default settings so go ahead and click on that click next uh, another little window here some information just go ahead and click start uh, it will begin uh, first uh, time synchronization then it's going to configure the database then it's going to start configuring the SSO and once that's finished uh, it'll start the server then you can go ahead and close this uh, we're going to go ahead and come up here where it says network click on network in the tabs then click on address because I'm going to go ahead and go from the DHCP to a static address and I said I was going to apply uh, 81 but I'm actually going to put 71 in there so this is going to be 192.68.1.71 and then use a typical uh, default uh, ma uh, net mask or subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and then I'll go ahead and log in. I said I, I was going to uh, set it as uh, 0.71. And then you're using your vCenter server, or uh, your vCenter client, you'll go ahead and log in to the vCenter server. And again, it's just root, and the password is just VMware. So go ahead and log in. And this is the screen you'll get once you've logged into the uh, vCenter server. You'll see a local host uh, icon up here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and right click that and we're going to create a new data center and go ahead and click on that uh, that data center will be added you'll have a new icon there it says data center and with the data center we're going to be adding some hosts and we're going to add the two hosts uh, that we created using the nested uh, nested ESXIs so go ahead and click on add host uh, the first one we're going to add is the 182.168.1.80 and again it the root is the username and VMware but this time it's VMware 123 that is the default password that we're using for the host so we'll go ahead and add that click next uh, you'll get this screen that comes up unable to verify the authenticity go ahead and click uh, yes uh, you trust the host and uh, the host will be added under the new data center it'll take a minute to look down here at this recent task and it takes about a minute to uh, go ahead and, and add this once it's added uh, we'll be adding uh, some uh, VMs to it you can see I've already added one here it's the Windows 2003 server uh, but we'll hold off on that right now we'll have another lab showing you how to add those uh, next we're going to add the second host so we're going to add our second host and uh, that IP address is going to be 192.168.1.90 uh, <clears throat> and it's going to be just the same thing that we did with the first one once we get those added we'll have our vCenter server up and running with the two hosts ready to be managed and the next lab we're going to show you how to add the shared storage and configure those hosts uh, for uh, vMotion so that we can uh, migrate our VMs uh, back and forth and we're going to be adding some uh, adding some uh, 2003 server uh, VMs and uh, that's it for now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time